Deveronians are Star Wars' answer to Wizards, Tieflings, and Dark Horse's Hellboy. They are, at least on the surface, the spawn of the non-Star Wars Hell itself, the humanoid defaults of that flaming, screaming pit. Though, while there were creatures deemed demons or devils in Star Wars, Deveronians were not, in any mythological or religious sense, demons or devils. In fact, they were actually native to a quite temperate green world, and they were not reptile-esque hellspawn, but mammals whose evolution led them to appear the way they do. Also, Deveronian females are far less hellish than their horned male counterparts, and generally less hot-tempered, and the Deveronians were actually one of the more technologically advanced species in the galaxy. In this video, we'll be discussing the Deveronian species in detail. The Deveronians is a story beginning on the planet Deveron of the Deveron system in the Dula Sector, a world of mountains, valleys, and thousands of rivers and orbited by two moons. Covered in jungle, most beings could breathe Deveron's atmosphere and endure its climate, which was pretty temperate. The gravity was no stress either, and the native Deveronians could speak basic standard no worries. So worry not, you needn't learn the infernal tongue. Now, I wouldn't say Deveron was an oasis, as jungles can be all sorts of hell in themselves, though it was abundant with life and resources, enough for the planet's sentient humanoid species to survive, evolve, and construct the tools needed to reach the stars. The Deveronians were a product of their environment, which until they reached the stars was solely Deveron. So now let's look at what said planet produced. Much the same as humans, Deveronians were mammalian hunter-gatherers whose males took care of the hunting part. As such, the Deveronian males developed a demon-esque temperament and physiology better suited to defending themselves against predators and overcoming prey. While their pronounced horns were the more obvious physical feature, both the bottom and top rows of teeth of the male Deveronian jaw were filled with incisors, and behind those teeth coiled a forearm long tongue. The males would hunt away from their settlements and the females for several days at a time, and this gave rise to the instinctual desire most male Deveronians had to travel and to explore. The females, however, did not go out slaying and consuming prey, but remained in and around their settlements, foraging, raising their younglings, developing and maintaining systems of government, and developing technology. Physically, the difference between male and female Deveronians was quite abrupt. Females bore no horns upon their heads, and instead had two black circles, where horns might have once sprouted, and they were almost entirely covered in fur, colored on a spectrum of brown to white. The females also, rather than two sets of full incisors, had a much more complicated dentition, capable of digesting both meat and plants. As some females were not covered with fur, it's safe to assume that the males once had lost their fur somewhere in evolution. All in all, just like for us humans in the real world, the females were in charge, and they only really wanted males around to, you know, make the younglings. Expect a video detailing the ins and outs of this process sometime soon. As for the physiological traits shared by both male and female Deveronians, their blood was thick and black when exposed to air, and they filtered it through not one, but two livers, making them highly resistant to poisons. In keeping with demon-esque stereotypes, the Deveronians were in some way involved in sulfur, using it as basically a drug to enhance physical attributes for a short while. Both sexes were also far more force-sensitive than other humanoid species, though the stable nature of the females made them better suited to training in the ways of the Force the light side at least, and the Jedi actually established a Jedi training facility, the Temple of Edith on Deveron. Other than this, no force-based traditions were practiced by the Deveronians. Leaving their females in their settlements paid off for the Deveronians. The females developed space-faring technologies and even a tumble hyperdrive or tumble drive all the way back in 27,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, as one of the first species in the galaxy. This was beneficial to both sexes, as males could scratch their itch to travel and explore by venturing into the stars, and the females would, quite frankly, be rid of the males. Of course, this expansion didn't affect only the Deveronians, but other species in the galaxy too, and many were quite put off by the appearance and nature of male Deveronians. 
In the words of Mistral Shadow Guard Naradan Julin in the Star Wars Tales comic Deal with a Demon, I know the difference between a demon and a Deveronian, and I'd rather trust a demon. This did not, however, prevent the Deveronians from joining the Galactic Republic, nor, as it seized control of the galaxy, the Galactic Empire. After the Empire was undone and the Galactic Civil War was over, however, the Deveronians were not granted entry into the New Republic, as the traditionalists among them still practiced capital punishment, literally feeding convicted criminals to giant horned reptilian creatures on their homeworld. Now, there's no use denying that our inspirations to cover this topic came from the sixth chapter of The Mandalorian, in which we got to see the hideous, scarred visage of Berg, a male Deveronian up close. Though, before we lock horns with old Berg, a few other Deveronians are worth mentioning. While many female Deveronians remained on their homeworld, many spread out into the galaxy and made good use of their cool natures and political minds, compared at least to their male counterparts. Around 22 years before the Battle of Yavin, female Deveronians Elsa Saimoro and Vien Say Malok represented Deveron in the Galactic Senate, though unfortunately, it turned out that Vien was actually conspiring with the Separatists and she had Elsa assassinated. Vien, for her treachery, was thrown to and eaten alive by those terrible horned reptiles, the Quora on the Deveronian homeworld. Another infamous Deveronian was Kadu Sai Malok, a Deveronian army captain with quite a detailed story in itself. He loved music, but not as much as he loved murder. During the Battle of Montilly and Surat in 5 BBY, Malok chased a group of rebels to the city of Montilly and Surat on Deveron, besieged them until they surrendered, and then executed 700 of them, men, women, and children, and he earned himself the nickname Butcher of Montilly and Surat. Wanting not to become the next Quora's meal, he quit the army and fled into the galaxy, through which he was hunted for that sweet, sweet bounty. Eventually, our pal Boba Fett caught up with him and returned him to the Deveronians, who, you guessed it, threw him live into the Quora, who tore his red skin from his flesh and watered the earth with his obsidian blood. You just can't outrun fate, my dude. Beholding the scarred red face of the Deveronian male known as Berg in Chapter 6 of The Mandalorian, you can sell his scene as fair share of action even before that, though we don't yet know exactly what this absolute animal was up to before he clashed with the Mando on that New Republic prison ship. Without focusing on this character's history, he was clearly the epitome of Deveronian good looks and the masculine stereotype. Firstly, he was a mercenary, so he got to go around killing things and seeing the galaxy, which was what Deveronian males were instinctually driven to do, and he was generally just a heavy unit. I mean, he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mando without any weapons but his fist and his head, eating Mando's flamethrower with a smile, and he survived a door shutting on both sides of his skull. He even lifted, crushed, and threw a massive security droid all by himself. Berg and his companions did betray Prince Oberyn, so I guess Shadow Guard Naradan Julin was right about at least some Deveronians in the end, senators included. On Berg eating Mando's flamethrower actually, this was definitely a nod to the Deveronians' demon-like appearance, though it makes little sense as why, evolving on Deveron, would the Deveronians have gained a resistance like this? Maybe we'll find out more and maybe we'll just pin it on the rule of cool. While the Deveronians were not demons or devils, they behaved like them and they certainly exhibited some physical characteristics that would lead to some pretty quick assumptions. 
We can't forget, however, that the Deveronians were also quite technologically advanced, reaching the stars and inventing faster than light travel long before many other species. Most of this was owed to their females though, and I'm sure the Deveronian females would have done away with their male counterparts if they weren't good for you know what. So, what are your thoughts on Star Wars' answer to Tieflings and Hellboy? Do you like the Deveronians? Make sure you let us know in the comments section below. And as usual, just before you go, make sure you check out all those links in the description below if you want to join the wider Geetsleys community. This includes our Patreon, our main Discord, our Geetsleys Gaming Network, and various other links that you'll find there. So anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.